I hope you brought your party wheelchair. Wheelchairs, roll into the chat. Let me see ya, wheelchairs, where you at? Wheelchairs, roll into the chat. Let me see ya, wheelchairs, where you at? Wheelchairs, roll into the chat. Let me see ya, wheelchairs, where you at? It is the Gypsy Rose episode. High ports. Wow, wow, wow. Bow, bow, bow. Wheelchairs. Hot wheels. Let's go. Congratulations for making time for the stupidest, most politically incorrect show on the internet. Welcome back, Instagram baddies. You thought you'd seen the last of me, didn't you? Never. Um... YouTube rats, you know what it is. You the real ones, you've been sticking with me since we've been on YouTube exclusively all these for the last, I don't know, how long have I been doing Politics Live? Six months? Whatever. It's Politics Live. Established 2019 politics. Uh, it's pop culture without the propaganda. I'm Alex Clark, queen rat host. And if you only know me for my podcast, The Spillover, welcome to the crack side. Uh, crackhead side of my brain. Can't even talk. That's how crackhead we are. Now, I look a little bit like a librarian mouse. And I just want to fully acknowledge that because I do have to go on the news after this. So I had to look like a little bit more like serious, even though like this show is on hinge. So it's very confusing if you're just tuning in for the first time. You're like, I don't understand this girl. She looks like, you know, this very studious mouse, but she's screaming about wheelchairs, which is like super politically correct, incorrect and unhinged. Well, I, welcome. Okay, welcome. Here is the show rundown for the day. Wheelchairs roll into the chat. Let me see your wheelchairs. Where you at? Gypsy Rose is out on the prowl. Girl gets out of prison. She dumps her current fiance for her ex fiance. Lizzo quits the music industry the next day, unquits. Podcaster Andrew Huberman is embroiled in a lot of drama after an expose came out about him. We're also getting a Legally Blonde TV sh uh, show, plus a remake of one of our favorite 2000s rom-coms. And lastly, I do have a confession to make to you. I lied to you! I lied! I'm a liar! Liar! But it was not on purpose! It was a mistake, and it has to do with something in this week's episode of The Spillover that just came out. I would just like to say, how nice is it, though, to have our Instagram friends back on today's live? I just want you to know, um, if you're new here, how this works. Uh, you're going out to eat, and so, therefore, you must tip your waitress. What do I mean you're going out to eat? You're like, Alex, I'm sitting on my couch. This is going out to eat. I... I'm the waitress. So if you're on Instagram, you tap the little heart, you drop a little rat emoji in the in the chat as my tip. If you are on YouTube, you hit the thumbs up button, make sure you're subscribed to Real Alex Clark, and that is my tip. So welcome to my restaurant. I'm serving gruel. Gypsy Rose Blanchard requested. She wants to feel her old prison days. She's nostalgic. Now, one very important announcement before we get started. We know the first bunch of speakers for Turning Point USA's Young Women's Leadership Conference this June 7th through 9th, San Antonio, Texas. Candace Owens, Holistic Hilda from the Weston A. Price Foundation, Erica Comazar, Taylor Dukes, Ali Beth Stuckey, Riley Gaines, and yours truly. More names are coming soon, and every year this conference is my favorite, but we have honestly never had a speak up, speak up, lineup of speakers so good. I mean, it's always good, but this is just the best one, like in my five years of working for Turning Point, the best one that we've had. Um, now, again, these are only the first few. These are only a, a handful. And then Candace Owens was announced yesterday, so she's not on the website yet. People are lagging behind the scenes on getting her up there. But Candace is on there, and then way more are coming. And this is like people that I've always wanted to speak at this conference that never have, or I've always wanted to interview that I never have. 
um, or just my most popular guests from the last year. Like we're covering everything from getting involved in the conservative movement to biblical parenting, homeschooling, non-toxic living, how to prioritize motherhood over career when it's important, and then how to get back to that career later or not. The merch that we are designing right now is the cutest that we've ever had. The theme this year is get back to your roots. So um, roots, a play on word for garden, like roots, and traditional values, getting back to our roots. Double meaning. I'm calling it Prairie Core if you need ideas for clothes. We always have a theme, so it makes it really fun for this conference to dress for because we're girls and so we like themes. And so every year I come up with something new and this is the one I wanted for this year. So Prairie Core, okay? Think floral, garden, homesteading, little house on the prairie, um, Peter Rabbit if he was a fashionista, verbatim that is actually what i told charlie kirk i wanted you should have seen his face he was so confused and basically looked like he was was wanting to ask for help when i said i want peter rabbit if he was a fashionista nobody understands my brain but you do which is why you need to come June 7th through 9th, you can use t uh, code ALEX for 25% off at YWLS2024.com. Code ALEX for 25% off general admission, YWLS2024.com. Let's just check in with the chat. Hello, hello, everybody who's late. Um, oh, my gosh, sorry. I, like, have a, a serious wedgie going on. Let's just be honest. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Stop. How's Instagram going? Or do, people, do people know about us? Wheelchair rats, rise. All right. Welcome, everybody. Let's get this show on the road. Gypsy Rose, single and ready to mingle. Wait. Single and ready to murder. For legal purposes, that was a joke. But what is not a joke is our favorite Hot Wheel princess is out on the prowl. Wheelchairs in the chat, where you at? First a wheelchair, then prison. Her fiancé, who proposed when she was in jail, should have known that the streets were going to be calling her name. She's got rubber to burn. She needs to be free. Go wild. The writing was written on the prison walls with gruel. Here's what we know about the timeline. Gypsy Rose Blanchard and Ryan Scott Anderson, that's the guy that we've seen all over the place with her, have called it quits. She posted a private Facebook message detailing her split from Ryan after nearly two years of marriage. They were basically married just while she was in prison. And... This is from People Magazine. In December, Gypsy was released from a Missouri correctional facility after serving seven years for conspiring to kill her mom. DD. In her Facebook post, Gypsy wrote that she's unfortunately separating from her husband and currently living in her parents' home. She said that she's receiving support from her family and friends to help her get through this rough patch. She went on to talk about following her heart and needing to find herself and deleting social media. By living with her parents, by the way, she means her mom, or sorry, <laughs> too soon. She means her dad and stepmom in the bayou. Crawfish boil gypsies. Let me see them scramp in the chat. Scramp, crawfish boil. Gypsy. Do you think that Gypsy loved that? You think when she was in prison, they, was it within the last seven years that Princess and the Frog came out? When she was in prison, did she get to watch Princess and the Frog? And if she did, because she's Louisiana girl, do you think she loved that character, that fly Mr. Ray, we love him. That's the kind of man she needs. She needs a Ray. People know who I'm talking about, right? Hopefully. Um, what I can't ever do his voice. And he has one of my favorite, most favorite cartoon voices. I need to look up a quote of his so that I can play it. Mr. Ray, Princess and the 
frog quotes. And I'm going to try my best to do a Louisiana Bayou voice. It came out in 2009, so was she in prison? What was seven years? I can't do maths. Okay, I see Prince Naveen quotes Ray. Here we go. Women like a man with a big back porch. First rule of, of the bayou, never take direction from a gator. Don't make me light my butt. A bug got to do what the bug got to do. Do I sound like him? After he heard that Naveen is in love with Tiana, he said, y'all gonna have the cutest little tadpoles. <laughs> okay. So sorry. We are having a crawfish boil of Gypsy Rose Blanchards. I don't even care if we're invited or not, but I am going to suck them heads and pinch them tails or whatever that saying is. So the split between Ryan and Gypsy did come as a little bit of a shock to the public, considering that, I mean, the last we heard from Gypsy and Ryan, they were on this massive press tour bragging about his fire D and how he's rocking her world every night. Am I surprised at this breakup? Yes and no. I guess I knew they wouldn't last, you know, something about like, a guy pursuing a famous murderer while she's in prison didn't exactly scream normal. But who am I to poo-poo love? By the way, don't forget, when you're eating your Louisiana shrimp and crawfish, you got you to gotta peel off the poop shoot. Peel off the poop shoot. Poop. Now... I thought they would not end up together forever, but I didn't think it would be this soon, especially with how obsessed with each other they seem to be. I bet Gypsy Rose, I mean, she's prime for some of the has disorganized attachment, right? Like the worst attachment style that you could have disorganized. I mean, don't you think she probably fits the bill with everything that happened with her? So I need attachment Adam, who was on my show a few weeks back talking attachment theory. I need him to do a little analyzing about Gypsy uh, and her breakup on, on his podcast because we need to un know what's going on with her. So I want to just go through some little clues here that stuff, stuff was not right. In January, she posted that she was doing a major hair change. She had all her little foils on her hair. And that right there, I thought, oh, you're telling me Miss Gypsy, Miss Hot Wheels got her hair done? Yeah, here's the thing. Tale as old as time. If your girl does a dramatic hair change, the breakup either just happened or it is coming. That is how we leave our scent if you will. We, that is how we put our stank on everything. When a girl does a massive hair change, that is her subtle way of telling the world, I'm about to be single or I am single. It is undeniable, like clockwork, every time there's never been a woman in the history, there's never been a history, no, there's never been a woman in the history of the dang world who went through a breakup and didn't change her hair. It just, it hasn't happened. It, has, it doesn't exist. There is nothing. Bangs, total color change, full highlight, pixie cut. She's going through something. As soon as she announces her split with Ryan, and allegedly, by the way, the reason is that he became super argumentative. He made her feel guilty for spending a lot of time with her father uh, so much after she got out of prison. Okay, you know what, Ryan? Absolutely not with that. This has Dr. Drew TV special written all over it. Gypsy, Ryan, Dr. Drew, a couch, and Ryan and Macy from Teen Mom. 
because there is no messy, dramatic relationship reality TV special that doesn't have Ryan and Macy from Teen Mom. I understand that they have nothing to do with Gypsy Rose Blanchard. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It matters that they're there. If we don't, I de- they're, they're, they just have to be there. I don't make the rules. But what I will say, there's no real reason. It's just for the drama. It's reality TV gold. Once again, I am begging t- TV networks to hire me for my brilliant ideas on what constitutes as actual good TV. If I wasn't doing this, I would be a producer for reality TV. I would be the person behind the scenes on the on the fly interviews on The Bachelor, The Bachelorette, the person that's sitting next to the cameraman who's talking and asking the questions to people in those single, you know, just them interviews where they're like they're dishing on what happened to them. I would be I would be instigating so much ish. It would be amazing. Like you never seen. Five days, five days after Gypsy announces that she and Ryan are donezo, Gypsy meets up with her ex-fiance, Ken. I didn't even know this girl had an ex-fiance. This is what, honestly, now this is where I get a little jealous and a little bit uh, upset. You are telling me that a girl could murder her mother, be in prison, And get proposed to not once, but twice. And I have never been engaged. And this girl murders her mom and gets, has missing teeth. You know what? I don't even, can I hate her? I don't know. Like, honestly, maybe it's just, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? She goes out to eat with this guy, Ken, apparently an ex-fiance, another person. I, I don't even know. I've never even heard of him. They get lunch. They're holding hands. And then they get tattoos. Yes, you heard that right. Absolutely unhinged. Clearly, Ken was Kenuff. Of all people, it was actually Ken's mother who confirmed to the press that this little canoodling even happened. And what was the matching tattoo of, you ask? Oh, well, an insider told TMZ that the couple opted for a husky dog. You're engaged. You break up with your fiancé to go out with your ex-fiancé so the paparazzi sees you. The way that you make your new fiancé jealous is that you're going to get a tattoo, a matching tattoo with your ex of a husky dog. What am I doing wrong? Not even an infinity symbol. Not even the uh, colon, semicolon. This is what every millennial white girl gets. Or a swallow. And you're telling me they got a husky... A, So they got a husky dog. His mom said they're not officially back together. They're just cool. And Ken is being a supportive friend to her. That's it. Okay. Well, they were holding hands, mom. So that doesn't seem like friends to me. And why are you loose lips with the press? You need to understand how this works. See, Gypsy doesn't understand. She's been in prison. She's coming out. She's a full-blown celebrity. Before that, she was in a prison in a wheelchair with her psycho mother. So she doesn't understand how the beast works that is celebrity world and the media and social media. And she needs to make sure that her circle, anyone she allows into her circle, are signing NDAs. And they know not to just talk to the press about what's going on in her life. This is the problem is that this girl now is running rampant. She's basically like a 13-year-old girl in an adult woman's body. You know, she's frozen in time in her mind mentally because of all the stuff she's endured. She's not, at you know, like a normal adult woman. She's just going nuts. She's going nuts. Now, this isn't the only shocking news from Gypsy this week. 
in the last few hours, she announced that she is doing a total, complete makeover. She said, I'm going through a personal transformation journey currently, and that includes a physical one, too. Plastic surgery for Gypsy. Wheelchairs in the chat, where you at? Let me see ya. Wheelchairs, where you at? She said, wish me luck with my surgery. And watch the whole thing this summer on Gypsy Rose Life After Lockup. Apparently, she wants a more feminine-looking nose. If Kim Kardashian is smart, I think she's going to offer Gypsy a Skims campaign. I want to see this girl on Real Housewives of Atlanta with a BBL. I want to see Gypsy negotiating deals with NATO. I want Trump to make her press secretary for Gypsy Rose Life After Lockup. And I also want a guest appearance on Sesame Street, Snuffleupagus, preferred puppet, maybe even Oscars host for 2025. Again, if I am the producer on Gypsy Rose Life After Lockup, these are the types of deals that I am making for my talent to make this the biggest reality show that's ever lived. And I would do it. I would figure out a way to make this happen. And nobody has the foresight. Nobody thinks the way that I do. That's why, like, my talents, maybe they're being wasted. Maybe I need to become a, a TV producer, you know, for 65K, move to L.A., live on Skid Row. I really just need to go all in. I need to go all in in this life because I feel like I have so much to offer that I'm never going to get to show to the world. I think this is just the beginning for Gypsy. I think the album is going to drop. We're going to get a feature from... Who would be a good feature for Gypsy Rose on her first album? Probably Pia Mia. She's been doing nothing. Maybe Tyga. Tyga and Gypsy Rose. The song can be called Wheels Off. Or maybe the album even. Maybe that's the lead single and the name of the album. Wheels Off, Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Or Little Pink House. Kind of like John Mellencamp vibes. Little Pink House by Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Do you see, do you see? Sexy Red. Ski, rolling in chair, wheels off, ski. Bad Baby, her baby could be even on the feature. It could be the three of them. It could be a feature with Bad Baby and Bad Baby's baby. Wheels off. Gypsy Rose, debut album. Okay, moving on to Lizzo. Lizzo quit and unquit the music industry within 24 hours. I literally hate this girl so much. Lizzo said that she was getting tired of putting up with being dragged by everyone in my life and on the internet. She said, all I want is to make music and make people happy and help the world be better than how I found it. She did say better than how she found it, not fatter. But I'm starting to feel, she said, like the world doesn't want me in it. I'm constantly up against lies being told about me for clout and views. I'm tired of being the butt of the joke every single time because of how I look. My character being picked apart by people who don't know me and disrespect, disrespecting my name. I didn't sign up for this blank. I quit. Thank you, Lizzo. It was so terrible, the response. Uh from the internet at this announcement, it was just, you wouldn't believe how many people were so upset. There was, people were burning couches in the street. It was like, you know, a UK, like UK just lost some basketball game. That's how people were reacting. And I'm pretty sure somebody just gave up, like just people were quitting their jobs. People were, No, um, actually, the response was crickets, crickets. Literally, nobody cared, and everyone was roasting her and making fun of her for that. So when she realized nobody cared, 
the next day, she walks it all back and then posts this. Here is Lizzo walking back what she said. Now, a warning, this video will assault your eyes. Hide your kids. Hide your wife. This is your warning. You, Lizzo, you know, she doesn't like being the butt of the joke, but she doesn't mind when her butt and her bubbies are out. So here is a clip. I want to make this video because I just need to clarify. When I say I quit, I mean, I quit giving any negative energy attention. What I'm not going to quit is the joy of my life, which is making music, which is connecting to people. Because I know I'm not alone. In no way, shape, or form am I the only person who is experiencing that negative voice that seems to be louder than the positive. If I can just give one person the inspiration or motivation to stand up for themselves and say they quit letting negative people win, negative comments win, then I've done even more than I could have hoped for. With that being said, I'm going to keep moving forward. I'm going to keep being me. Once again, I just want to say thank you. The love that I've received whew, means more than you know. I am so tired, Lizzo. I'm tired of being the butt of the joke, but I also refuse to cover my butt. Why does everybody always talk about my fat big body? Why is my fat body always the center of attention? I, I have no idea how I ended up here. Help me, help me. I lost, I lost my granola bar in my roll. The, she is, okay. Here's the truth about this little stunt. And I am mean. Yes, I'm being me a little extra mean, but it's because she is actually the worst and a toxic serial abuser. And absolutely everyone sees that the jig is up with this broad. Everything about her is fraudulent. She is a woke, grifting loser, loser bully who needs to go away. She has done nothing positive, done nothing positive to the world. She has encouraged people uh, to to ignore to ignore health signs, you know, because every size is beautiful. That's not true. That's not true. Some sizes too big and too small mean death is around the corner. We should not be glorifying that. No, not. There is something, there is a toxicity to the body positivity movement that is deadly, and she perpetuates that, and I cannot and will not ever defend that. Now, the truth is, the whole sh this whole charade of uh, quitting and unquitting um, was because she's trying to garner some sort of sympathy from the public, paint herself as a victim, because this legal drama that she is in for sexually harassing her backup dancers, creating this hostile, toxic work environment, is still full speed ahead, by the way. She doesn't want to acknowledge that. She hopes everyone's forgotten. It is full speed ahead. She knows that she's toast. In February... A couple months ago, a judge in Los Angeles Superior Court denied the singer's request to throw out the lawsuit. It's still happening, people. The, the taking my dancers and forcing them to eat bananas out of a stripper's snatch, all of this is still getting exposed, and she is not happy that she couldn't use her celebrity dim to get it thrown out of court. Now, the judge did give her a small win, which is he elected to toss out some of the plaintiff's accusations against Lizzo and her team, including that Lizzo fat shamed one of her dancers. So he was like, OK, here's the deal. I'm not going to take away the fact that you like sexually harass them, but I'll give you a win. I'll, I won't let them bring up that, you know, you allegedly fat shame them. OK. 
The lawyer who represents the dancers after this whole I quit charade, he posted, you know, this is a joke that Lizzo would say that she's being bullied by the Internet when she should instead be taking an honest look at herself. There is no one more insufferable in the music industry right now than Lizzo. Second runner up. Easily Jojo Siwa. This disastrous rebrand that is happening right now is ripe for an SNL skit. I, the whole thing honestly seems like satire. The whole thing. Have you been seeing this? Do you know what I'm talking about? The the disastrous, weird uh, JoJo Siwa, like, I'm coming out and I'm so edgy now and I'm grown up and I don't want you to see me as a kid walking around with a penis. She's walking around with a penis stuffed animal and she's literally a lesbian. She's literally a lesbian, but she's walking around with a penis stuffed animal, going into sex shops and holding the receipt, like this huge receipt, like out. So the paparazzi get a picture of like all the sex stuff she bought. Cringe just it's like it's exact. OK, if SNL was going to write a skit making fun of how, you know, the stereotype that all of these child stars child singers grow up and then they want to be a singer and they want to be seen as edgy like Miley Cyrus did and all this like if I was going to make this like a joke out of it Jojo C was rebrand is what I would do as a joke her new song I think it's out today it's called Karma it is so bad it's so cringe try hard awful awful and it's just even weirder coming out with a song called Karma. Like Taylor Swift had a huge song called Karma very, very, very recently. Why would you try to do your first single as a singer with a song with the exact same name as Taylor Swift? Like the whole thing is just bad. The outfits are bad. Everyone is roasting her for this. Like nobody is here for this. Do we have a picture of her with the penis stuffed animal? Because that's the real joke. Yeah, she's like, I'm a bad girl. I did some bad things. I swear now. I make out now. I'm a lesbian, but I'm going to carry a penis stuffed animal. Like, what? She was on Dance Moms. Yes, somebody said, where did she come from? Was she a, on that Dance Mom show? Yes. She is a phenomenal dancer. So I just don't understand... How bad. It, it really is like she went to Nickelodeon and said if Nickelodeon was, because she was on Nick, if Nickelodeon was going to be in charge of my rebrand and make me an edgy adult, how would they do it? And that's what she's doing. That's how awful it is. Okay, I don't think they can find the penis picture, but, oh, they can't Google penis. Imagine that. You've seen it on Twitter. All right. TV and movie news, um, big movie news, a John Tucker Must Die sequel is in the works. Have you seen this movie? It came out in 2006, one of my favorites. By the way, can we just take a moment for 2006 and pay our respects, put some respect on it? It was the best year of my life. Personally, my favorite year, truly, seventh grade was my favorite grade, favorite year, um, iconic, I fell in love, his name was Eric. I then we broke up. It was my first breakup. And we had a I had a group of like five girlfriends. They were my best friends. We took turns sleeping at each other's houses, sleepovers every weekend with all of us. And we stayed up late. We planned our futures. We dreamed about what we wanted to be when we got older, compared our bodies, traded notes in class, skinny dipped. It was peak girlhood in the now and then way. If you see now and then, like that was my seventh grade year. Oh, and in eighth grade. So it was like my eighth grade year because I'm 31. So eighth grade was 2007. And 2007 was really good, too, because 2007, like you have MySpace coming out. So we're like starting to we're using MySpace a little bit, but we're also like still real kids, like doing real kid old school stuff. So I met this boy from another school on MySpace and he was like this really cute skater boy who had flippy brown hair. Like, I mean, exactly as you're picturing, he was very cute. That was him. And so 
there was this event in a town that connected both of our towns and he was going to be at that and I was going to be at that with my friend and her parents. It was like a firework festival and the summer it, or no, it was late spring, late spring, a huge firework show on a waterfront. Okay. And he came and he was wearing like a backwards flat bill hat and he had like a couple of his little friends and they were all, they all rode their bikes to the festival. Now, when do you remember when in, imagine like the last time a, a group of middle school age kids all rode their bikes somewhere. So my friend and I are there and I'm so excited. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to meet this boy from MySpace. We meet, I sit on his handlebars. He drives me or drives me rides me around. I'm sitting on this cute boy's handlebars. And that was the first time that we met. And it was like literally a, a magical day. Like the cute boy when you're 13 years old, flippy skateboarder guy, very cute kid, very respectful. He was, he was such a sweet boy. Now he's married. He's actually married now to a girl who lived on my street. The whole thing is absolutely crazy, but he was so sweet. And now he's married and has kids. And you know, that is what it is. But, um, Anyway, my sixth and seventh grade were great. And part of the reason they were great is because John Tucker Must Die was a movie that had come out. And um, if you haven't seen it, here's the summary. After discovering that they are all dating the same guy, three popular students from different cliques band together for revenge. So they enlist the help of a new gal in town to conspire to break the jerk's heart and destroy his reputation. Here is what, so we're getting a sequel, John Tucker Must Die 2, 18 years later. And this is what an E! News article said about the sequel. Jesse Metcalf, who played the role in the 2006 film, shared the major way in which the follow-up to the teen classic will improve upon the original story. He said it hits on a lot of similar themes, but it's through the lens of the current landscape. So I'm sure it's going to be like taking them down on Instagram or something. Um, he said that the script is more con conscientious than the first film, noting that it's not quite as misogynistic. Oh, here we go. <gasps> Gay. Do not ruin this. Do not wokeify John Tucker must die. And they probably won't even say die. It's probably going to say John Tucker must. What is like the soft woke version of that? Pass on. Because, you know, we, we, it's, it's not die. Pass on. Fall asleep. John Tucker must sleep. And he said, okay, he went on. He said the movie will still be very funny. And he said he's really excited about his character's journey, John. He said, my character has a great arc. John has a daughter now. And you see how fearful he is that she is going to get John Tuckered. John Tucker must die too. What do we think? Is it going to be a yay or a nay? Oh, unalived. That's right. John Tucker must be unalived. Oh, wait, wait, I'm dead. A Pi said John Tucker must do better. <laughs> wait, John Tucker must listen and learn. John Tucker, you know, the apology to her. John, I'm, I'm here to listen and learn. I'm listening and I'm learning. I'm doing the work. Wait, John Tucker must do the work. That's the woke version. I'm dead. Stop. I'm dead. That's phenomenal. John Tucker must do the work. And donate to BLM. Jesse said John Tucker must perish. <laughs> oh, so good. Okay, so the other thing, though, speaking of TV and movies, the other announcement on the streets according to Gypsy Rose, is that Reese Witherspoon is working on Legally Blonde, the TV series for Amazon. Just joking, not Gypsy Rose, but The Hollywood Reporter. 
So Amazon is teaming up with Reese Witherspoon and her production company, Hello Sunshine, to develop Legally Blonde, the TV series. So people who worked on Gossip Girl and the OC are attached to be writers on this offshoot. The premise is being kept under wraps. We don't know if it's about Bruiser. Here's hoping. It is unclear, Hollywood Reporter says, if Reese has any plans to reprise her role as Elle Woods in the potential TV series. It comes as Amazon has been scouring the MGM library for titles to revive since acquiring the storied studio a few years ago. The streamer and Hello Sunshine are looking to turn the Legally Blonde films into a multiple show franchise with a second potential offshoot also in its early stages. I hope that means it's going to involve Jennifer Coolidge. Thank you. I had a brain fart. I just had an out. I just had that's a raven moment where I just my mind left my body. Jennifer Coolidge sideshow, right? Like, they're going to do that because she is at height popularity since White Lotus. By the way, White Lotus, I'm going absolutely nuts since we didn't get a new season this fall. Like, absolutely nuts. I'm losing my mind. Losing my mind. I cannot believe we have to wait like a whole another year and a half. It's not okay. I'm not okay. I need White Lotus injected into my veins. And I also need Jennifer Coolidge on every season forever, no matter what. Like, she can never. I can't believe. I cannot believe. She's done after this season. <gasps> anyway, so if she's not filming White Lotus, she's op- She's free, right? So maybe she'd be available for one of these Legally Blonde spinoffs. Now, Reese reportedly told, she told the, not reportedly, she did tell The Hollywood Reporter that she was interested in revisiting Elle while, Elle, like, if Elle Woods was in her 40s, what would she be like? She said, I want to discover what age means to that character. And this is something that she said in a 2019 interview. She said, aging, contemporary ideas, how things have evolved or not evolved. So to me, the fact that she said, like, I want to revisit that character. I want to see what that character would be like when she's in her 40s makes me think that she will be reprising her role as Elle Woods in this remake series. Don't you think? Now, I am guessing that a lot of us would be excited for that. But I do have a confession to make to you. I am not a Legally Blonde stan. I feel very indifferent to that movie. I always have. I've never cared much for it. I would much rather watch, if we're talking about Reese Witherspoon movies, I would much rather watch Water for Elephants, Fear. Wasn't that that Mark Wahlberg movie where she's on the roller coaster? Ayo, if you know, you know. Walk the line. Speaking of seventh grade, Cruel Intentions. That was the year that I discovered Cruel Intentions. And that movie was one of the defining movies of my life. The soundtrack to Cruel Intentions. Hello? (gasps) Bittersweet Symphony, Windows Down, Sunny Day. That is living. Colorblind by Counting Crows. It's my funeral song. Yes, I have planned that out. I want Counting Crows Colorblind to be played at my funeral. Listen, 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 listen. Does anybody in the chat have a teenage daughter? How many people that are watching have a teenage daughter who's middle school or teenage age? Anyone? Or is everybody, no, everybody's kids are little. Anyone at all have a teenage daughter? Because I have a tip for you. This is going to change your daughter's life. If they're not teenage age yet, they will be eventually. And so you have to do this once they're like 12, 13 years old. Okay? You have to turn down. You have to put all the blinds in your house down and turn off all the lights. Like make it as absolutely pitch black as you can. Preferably a basement. You have to put on Counting Crows colorblind, absolute full volume, and you have to lay on the floor with her. With and Both of you have your eyes closed, and you lay on the floor, and you don't talk, and you have the song on as loud as it will go, and you absorb 
you just feel the song. And if you are an adult, if you are like 28, 29, 30 year old woman, and you've never done this, you've never experienced counting crows colorblind in the dark on the floor, you are missing a huge piece of the girlhood puzzle. A massive piece. This is like a coming of age moment that absolutely all of us as women have to experience. There's nothing else like it. There's no song like it. You will, ha you will feel everything. And that is my girlhood life tip that everyone must do. Do it tonight. Make your husband lay there. Tell your husband tonight we're laying on the floor and we're listening to Color Blind by Counting Crows. And he's going to think you're crazy and you have to say, Alex Clark told me that I have to try it. It's, you know, what, two-minute song or something? Like, he can lay on the floor for two minutes. And then give me a rating, you know, scale of one to ten, how amazing was the experience? If it's less than an eight, I'm, like, extremely concerned of how you're not loving it. You're missing everything. Ariana says, just tell me what I'm missing. You're missing everything. I don't, it's something that you can't put into words. It's just a girlhood experience. You're just going to have to trust me on this, okay? Just everybody do it, please. Now, they're trying to come for Andrew Huberman. Do we have any uh, uh, Andrew, do we have any Huberman Labs isn't that his podcast name? Do we have any Andrew Huberman fans in the house? No, you can't just close your eyes. I am telling, listen, just hold on before we get to Andrew Huberman. You have to turn the lights off, pitch black, yeah. You have to lay on the floor on your back with your eyes closed and the music blasting. I'm just, trust me, you cannot half-ass this experience. I need you to follow my instructions and then tell me on a scale of one to 10 how it was. Okay, I'm not a witch. I'm not casting a spell. It's just like, haven't you ever heard a beautiful song and like felt it through the core being of your body? The song isn't witchcraft. I'm not asking you to play Fleetwood Mac on the floor with your lights off. Then maybe you have a reason to judge me. I'm talking about Counting Crows. Come on, this is a quintessential 90s band. All right, moving on, Huberman. Any Huberman stands in the house. There is some crazy expose that came out. Was it Rolling Stone? And basically, let me just tell you something. So this guy hosts one of the biggest podcasts in the world, if you don't know. And, oh, it was New York Magazine. New York Magazine runs this article, 8,000 words on his sex life. Okay. What we know about this guy, he's a podcaster and a neuroscientist, and he has one of the biggest health podcasts on the planet. Millions of people have gone to him to hear about their, you know, why they should cut out alcohol, uh, GMOs, seed oils, what brand of granola he prefers. Um, I've got the, the free press article by Susie Weiss up. And so it was really strange. Well, it wasn't strange, but it was. To everyday people who are not awake, they saw this expose blasting him for his sex life, and they were like, what was the point of this? Now, I know what the point was. Maybe some of you know what the point was. The point, first of all, did Andrew Huberman do something really gravely wrong? I don't know. I mean, technically, yes, I guess. But should we care? No. Um, he has had like a bunch of uh, girlfriends at one time. He was kind of playing. Oh, people thought this was going to be like a Nexium style cult he was running. The people are like, oh, my gosh. Like, what kind of sex sexual deviancy has Andrew Huberman been doing behind the scenes? Nothing. He is a jacked, ripped dude who has a, gets a lot of chicks. Wow, groundbreaking. It was such a big pfft, nothing, this article coming out. They really tried to make it something. They were really trying to take him down. The reason behind this is because 
everything he's sharing, the information that Andrew Huberman shares on his podcast, which every episode he does is like three hours long. It's kind of like Joe Rogan style, but for health. And everything that he's sharing on his podcast uh, is a lot of the kind of stuff that I share. It is going against the status quo. It's telling you to take your health into your own hands. It's telling you not to rely on what the government tells you automatically. They need people like this to be quiet. You cannot have people spreading information like this. You have to do anything that you possibly can to find something that could be considered scandalous, which he obviously really doesn't have anything. Okay, he cheated on some girls. You know, they thought they were in a relationship with him. He was dating a few people or something. Okay, you know, tale as old as time again. Maybe Gypsy Rose was one of them. I won't be surprised if the third guy she gets a, a buffalo tattoo with or what was it? A husky dog. If she the next guy, Gypsy Rose, gets a husky dog tattoo with is Andrew Huberman. You know, we can all point and laugh. But is that nice? Is that nice to do? Is it moral? Is it the Christian thing to do? No, I don't think that Andrew Huberman has ever said he's a Christian. So we can't hold him to those standards, and this really isn't scandalous. Who cares? Is It's not a nice thing to do, but it's not illegal, and it's it's really a big, huge nothing burger. But um, he is a good podcast. I don't listen to him, really, only because I don't like that long of episodes in my podcast. Like, I listen to Rogan once in a blue moon when he has a, uh, someone on that I really want to hear from. When any Anytime he has Tim Dillon on, I'm listening. But... I don't like uh, three-hour-long episodes on podcasts. I, my sweet spot is like an hour and a half, two hours max, which is why my episodes, I try not to go over two hours. If it's like a really good guest that has a lot of knowledge that I, I can't condense into like an hour, then um, I try not to go over that time because I just think that's too long. But anyway, I just wanted to see what you guys thought of the Huberman drama, if anybody knew. But, you know, I guess I never really, like, really thought about how hot he is until this scandal. And then I started, like, looking at pictures of him. And I'm like, oh, okay, Mr. Neuroscientist. I, I get it now. I, I get how you were able to have 14 girlfriends at once. So that's that drama. I don't want to, I don't have that much to say, but I do have a confession to make to you. I need to own up to a lie that I told. Um, it was not intentional to lie about this, but it happened because sometimes things happen and then, well, I'll just explain. Um, how many people have already in the last few hours listened to my latest episode of The Spillover with Abigail Schreier on the problems with the therapy industry? Anyone listen to that yet or are still a lot of people that haven't yet? I'm curious, like, how soon, when, when a new Spillover episode comes out, are you listening right away or are you listening, like, over the weekend or you wait till Mondays or, or how long does it take you to listen to a new Spillover, really? Because at the end, I teased that I was going to be interviewing the next episode that was coming out uh, this coming week was going to be with a raw milk farmer. And how I was going to be talking to this raw milk farmer about, you know, like, what are the myths about drinking raw milk? What's the deal? Why do we pasteurize milk in the first place? How safe is this really? How do you get it? All, all things raw milk. Here's the thing. We had, like, um, a very random spurt of severe, like, torrential downpour in rain in Phoenix, which, you know, I always tell you when it rains in Phoenix, it's so crazy because it never rains here. So only, you know, like eight times a year it rains. And so when it does, the whole city is like in a panic and a tizzy. It's always sunny here. So this he is a real farmer and he happens to live here. He lives in the Phoenix area. And so he was dealing with the rain and then he never had this happen before. I was supposed to, it was supposed to be a quick turnaround episode. Sometimes I record a spillover episode. It comes out months later. Sometimes I record it. It comes out the following week. So I was supposed to film with him yesterday and then it was going to be coming out next Friday. But he called us as like, hey, so because of the rain, I've got things going on. I got animals that got out, you know, the, the, the pigs are having an orgy in the mud. The, the chickens are watching the pigs. And so we, I have to round up the gang. I've got to get everybody under control. It's like a free for all with the barnyard and, or whatever's happening. And so, um, 
he had to postpone. So the interview, basically what happened was none of us thought that, oh, remember in the outro, I te- I always teased the next week's episode and I had teased the raw milk because, you know, we thought that was happening. And then last minute problem is that he had to cancel. Normally what we do is we, before the episode drops, I would edit that part out. So I just wouldn't have a tease or I would record a new one teasing what the episode is going to be. But we forgot. So I'm like listening last night and I'm like hearing my outro teasing the raw milk farmer and I'm like, dang it, I lied to them. They're going to be so excited about raw milk. But it it is happening. It's just uh, it literally now uh, because of my shooting schedule, because see, I'm booked far in advance. Like we're already placing people in like June and July to come out here now and film. And I so I only have a uh, anyway, you don't care. The point is. Now Milk Guy, because he canceled, he's getting pushed way back into the release schedule. So now he may not come out until like July or August. So it's going to be a long time till you hear Raw Milk. But um, I will tell you who I am actually coming out with. So um, this is a really exciting one. Everybody has been uh, on me about we want a pop culture episode. But then, you know, health and wellness. Everybody loves the health and wellness. So I have something really cool. This is like best of both worlds. It's both. It's pop culture and health and wellness. You say, how can that be? Well, how can that be? How can that be? Well, I am interviewing a celebrity chef. And here's where it gets really cool. Not only is he a celebrity chef who was the personal chef for people like um, Gerard Butler, Tom Cruise, George Clooney, was he one? He also is an expert in organ meats. This is so cool. It is so fun. It is so exciting. He is going to talk all about like working for the cooking for these different celebrities and give us tea on that. But he also the other half of the episode is just going through like, first of all, what are organ meats? How do you prepare them? Why are they good for you? All this kind of stuff, because everybody has questions about this because beef liver is like the new thing. I want to ask him, you know, what are these different foods that everybody's talking about that are actually superfoods and what aren't superfoods? What kind of pans? He is a professional chef. So I'm like, tell us the truth about cookware. What pans should we be using? I ask him if we need to be washing our chicken breasts. I mean, everything that you can think of, I hope, I asked. Um, So it's so fun. He really brings the energy. And he also is the founder of one of my favorite, favorite food companies out there right now in the in the um, food space, health and wellness space. So Celebrity Chef is next week. So sorry to to break your hearts over raw milk, but it's coming. I just don't know when. Um, So that is that to look forward to. If you joined us on Instagram uh, for the live, thank you. If you joined us on YouTube, thank you. Um, And thumbs up this video if you haven't subscribed to Real Alex Clark on YouTube or heart this live while you're watching. It is pop culture without the propaganda. I'm Alex Clark. This is Politics Live. Wait! Before we go, I do got to tell you, though, uh, no Politics Live next Friday. I know. Sad. Aww. So you'll have to, you know, just we do have some other stuff coming out. The Lisa Frank documentary is coming out early next week. I, I know that's been a while. If you were on that live, I teased that the Lisa Frank documentary, I was going to remake it to be better. Um, if you saw that like several years ago during the pandemic, I made this Lisa Frank documentary. Basically, like there's a huge scandal about that brand and not a lot of people know about it. So I'd made this little documentary on the OG politics. And then I was talking about it and like, oh, I should remake it now because we just have a better situation now. Like it'll look better. The editing will be better. Like a real good mini documentary for YouTube. So look for that early next week. So you can watch that. Um, you can listen to the spillover with the celebrity chef that specializes in organ meats. Tell the, please do me a favor. Somebody take one for the team. Put that in the cute service Facebook group, the tease, the update on who our um, celebrity chef uh, that, sorry, I can't. <laughs> Tell them that we it's not raw milk. It's a celebrity chef. Okay? For Tom Cruise and people. Um, so anyway, no politics live next week because I'm going to Indy to see my dad for the weekend. Very short trip. So I haven't been able to go back since January. So I need to go back. Going to my cousin. My cousin is having like a little art 
show thing, his senior art show. So we're going to support him and go to that and see my dad real quick. And then I'll come back um, because I have so many spillover interviews and stuff. I can't miss too long. And then in June, after YWS, I'll go there for like a week for Father's Day week. So I'll be there for longer in June. But anyway, somebody do me a favor, please. Tell the Cute Service Facebook group. Okay, I love you. Mean it. Bye.